Puss, puss. Pussy, pussy. Ah, there you are. I've got your breakfast. Seen the cat anywhere, Arthur? We haven't got a cat. Yes, we have. It's a little black and white one. It's dead, Mum. Gone up to cat heaven. Oh, poor little thing. What happened? Dad backed the car over it, remember? Dad? Your dad? He's dead. I know. So's the cat. No. No, Arthur, your father passed away ages ago. I know, but before he did, he ran over the cat. And it killed him? Well, it killed the cat. Dad was a bit upset at the time, but I don't think it killed him. Well, 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 I could have sworn we had a cat. It's funny how your memory plays tricks on you sometimes. Anyway, I've got your breakfast. And it's your favourite. <laughs> it is your favourite, isn't it? Yes. Would you like Mummy Bear to take the top off for you? No. How long did you cook this egg for? Oh, hours. I know you don't like them underdone. Well, this is cosy. Just the two of us. I wish you wouldn't keep saying that. You've said it every morning since Deirdre left. Dreadful business. I don't know how she could do that, just walking out on you like that. Never mind. It's all for the best. Yes. At least we don't have to say grace all the time, do we? No. That's all over, thank heavens. What do you mean, thank heavens? You were the one who insisted on saying it. What's wrong with saying grace? No one says grace at breakfast. No, and that's what's wrong with the world. You only did it to annoy Deidre. Uh, anyway, you couldn't even remember how to say grace. You used to recite the man from Snowy River. Well, I don't think it matters what you say as long as your eyes are closed. But now that you've got rid of Deidre, we don't say grace anymore, do we? There was movement at the station. <laughs> Stop it! Now, this is what you do, isn't it? Every time someone wants to talk to you about something serious, you pretend to be vague. What's that bowl of milk doing there? You put it there. I did? You put it there for the cat. We haven't got a cat. <laughs> Arthur, and you tell me my memory's going. Dear me, I think you need a holiday. I do. Yes, I think you do. I think you do deserve a good... I say, I think you deserve a good... Woman. No. Smack. No, no. Holiday? Yes. I think you deserve a good holiday. Mum, why don't you go and stay with Robert for a while? Robert who? Robert. My brother. Your other son. There's no need to speak like that, Arthur. How am I expected to know which Robert you mean when you just say Robert? There must be dozens of Roberts. How many Roberts do you know? Could have meant Robert Menzies. Robert Menzies is dead. I know. So I wouldn't want to stay with him. <laughs> Who's that? Sounds like Robert. Robert who? <laughs> Good day, Artie. How's tricks? Hello, Mum, I brought you some flowers. Oh, Robbie, how nice of you to think of your poor old mother. That's very thoughtful of you. I'll just go and put them in a... in a... Vase? <laughs> Thank you, Robert, dear. <laughs> Listen, Robert, I was wondering, what are the chances of Mum going to stay with you for a while? Well, of course, Arthur, no problem. Liz and I are always glad of an opportunity to see a bit more of old mum. Any time. Now. But not just right now. <laughs> it's always not just right now. You never have her. I beg your pardon, we had her just recently. Last year. And that was only for a weekend. Is it my fault Liz got one of the migraines? <laughs> Robbie, there you are. I thought you were here. Uh, look, I've got some lovely flowers for you to take home to Liz. <laughs> No. Mum, I brought them for you. 
Oh, Robbie, how nice of you to think of your poor old mother like that. Arthur never brings me flowers. I'll just go and put them in a... Vase. Vase, yes. Vase, vase or vase. See what a few flowers can do? Show a little thoughtfulness, Arthur. Something to give a life a little charge. What do you want me to do? Plug her into a PowerPoint? <laughs> Listen, I need a break. Yes, you look terrible. Couldn't you just take her for a while? It'll give me a chance to sort things out with Deirdre. I'd love to help. You know I would. But just at the moment... I know. Liz has a migraine. <laughs> We're broke. I can't afford it. You can't be broke. You're a dentist. I'm not a dentist. So what is it you do in your patient's teeth? Drill for oil? I'm an orthodontist. It equals rich dentist. And anyway, what's being broke got to do with it? I'm only a humble journalist. She costs me money too, you know. Yeah, she gets a pension, can't you use that? So can you. I couldn't take money from a pensioner. Especially not my mother. <laughs> you expect me to. Sure, but that's you. Our standards are different. Uh, there we are. One vase, vase or vase. Where are the flowers, flowers or fleurs? <laughs> what? The flowers, where are they? Oh, yes, yes, where are the flowers? Uh, I put them somewhere, uh, in something, I think. I'll go and find them. Well, I just dropped in to tell you that Liz and I are off on a holiday. What a coincidence. Arthur's talking about having a holiday too. I think he's planning to stay with you and Liz for a while. <laughs> Arthur is, not you. Oh, that's very sweet of you to offer, Robbie, dear, but I'm quite happy here. That's what I told Arthur, but he wouldn't listen. I know, it's, it's all this dreadful Deirdre business. I have to tell him some things over and over again. <laughs> Mum, where did you put these? Ah, you found them. Did you put them in the bathroom? Um. In something white? Might have been. With water in it? Now I remember, I put them in the basin. She put them in the loo. She probably thinks it's a big white vase. My mother always prepared flowers by putting their heads in water first. Yes, I remember Grandma doing that. It's perfectly sensible, Arthur. Well, I've got to go. I just popped in to tell you that we're off to Tahiti for a few weeks. I thought you were supposed to be broke. When we get back, we will be. <laughs> See you later, Mum. Oh, bye-bye, Robbie. Dick. See you, Addy. Listen. No, no, Arthur. The flowers are for Mum. I want you to take her. You heard her. She doesn't want to come. She likes it here with you. You're doing a great job. I don't care whether she likes it here or not. She's driving me crazy. Look, if she is as bad as you say she is... Oh, come on. If she is, well, then maybe we ought to think about making some other arrangements. Like what? Put her in a home. <laughs> Let someone else look after her if you can't. Oh, yes, that's your solution, isn't it? Shove her into some old cheapo fibro shed with 50 geriatrics and the chooks. You've been watching too much of that 60 minutes. It really is the only sensible solution, Arthur. If you're serious about getting Deirdre to come back. You were asking me to choose between my mother and my marriage. All right, don't. It's your decision, but don't blame me if you lose your wife. Oh, by the way, uh, I saw your little boiled egg with a face on it. You never grow up, do you? Hey? <laughs> of course, I haven't actually decided to put my mother into a home yet. Don't think of it as putting your mother into a home, Mr. Bear. Think of it as introducing your dear mother into a care situation. You can see what I mean by the difference. Oh, yes. Of course. A care situation is one in which the older ones, in this case your dear mother, are introduced into a world of care, where they're waited on hand and foot, given all the facilities of a luxury hotel, where they're treated as what they are, our country's national living treasures. By the way, where are all the uh, national living treasures? It's their sleeping time now. They all like to have little snoozies after lunch. <laughs> But it's only 10.30. Strange, isn't it? They all seem to prefer an early lunch. If I did bring, uh, introduce my mother here, would her pension cover everything? Ah, oh, 
Absolutely, certainly. 100% yes, Mr. Bear. Oh, yes. Her dear pension would cover all of the basics completely. Unless... Unless you wanted your dear mother to have one or two of the little extras which most of the sensitive, caring families seem to like to give their little ones. Extras? You mean like food? <laughs> oh, yes. Well, on the whole, this is not bad at all. I haven't quite decided, though. Take as long as you like, Mr. Bear. There's no rush. You can take the rest of your life. If you want to. <laughs> Mum, I've been thinking some more about you having a holiday. A long, long holiday. <laughs> well, you, you know, uh, somewhere like a luxury hotel, where they'd wait on your hand and foot where you'd be properly looked after. Sounds like you're trying to put me into one of those homes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm lucky you're not that sort of a son. <laughs> now, I think I'll just go and make us a nice hot cup of... What's the name? I need something stronger. Tea, tea. Take one tablet at night. Oh, all right. <laughs> Aren't you having some tea? No, no, it seems to have gone stone cold. I want to talk to you. I'm looking for something to have one of my tablets with. What tablets? The ones my doctor gave me. The ones for your memory? Oh, is that what they're for? <laughs> Mum, I'm worried about you. Ah, oh, that's sweet of you, dear, but what for? You need looking after. Do I? Yes. Ever since Dad died, you've been going downhill. Well, that's why Deirdre and I moved in. I certainly don't want Deirdre looking after me. I can't do it on my own. I haven't... I haven't got the right attitude or something. I don't treat you as an honoured guest. I don't look upon you as one of our country's national living treasures. <coughs> you didn't drink that. Yes. And you can certainly taste that terrible chlorine. <coughs> that wasn't chlorine. That was vodka. They're not putting vodka in the water. <laughs> They're not. I did. Oh, I put the vodka in the glass. But you can't go round putting vodka in the water. Think of all the babies who drink it. I'm not... Oh, never mind. But I do mind. I put the vodka in the glass to make myself a drink. Now, if you don't like babies, that's quite all right. But you do not have to go around poisoning them with vodka in the water. Do you, Arthur? No, Mum. No. Well? Well, what? Aren't you going to do something about it? About what? About getting the vodka out of the water. <laughs> all right. Hello, waterboard? Get all the vodka out of the water. Yes, I know I said yesterday I wanted the vodka in, but today I want it out. There. Satisfied? No. You were only pretending to dial. Mum. I'm worried about you. It's your memory. You can't remember things. What can't I remember? You can't remember anything. Name one thing I can't remember. I don't know what you can't remember. So how do you know I can't remember it? I need a drink. Not another one. 
I didn't have the first one. You did. Ha! Got you. Now who can't remember? I never drink. All this drinking, Arthur. I hope you're not turning into a... I say, I hope you're not turning into a... Moth. No. Werewolf. No, no. Into a... Alcoholic. Yes, into one of those. Your Uncle Freddy was one of those, and look what happened to him. I know, he died. Exactly. He was 94 years old. <laughs> Mum, I'm worried about you because... You're getting old. You know what? I think it's starting to affect my memory. <laughs> and there's another thing. I don't want to be 35 years old and still living with my mother. But you are 35. I know. And I'm living with my mother. <laughs> oh, and you're doing a wonderful job. Not many young men would do what you're doing. They'd be out gallivanting, chasing women, having a wonderful time. But I'm glad you're not like that. But that's the whole point. Arthur, what is the point? The point is that I found somewhere really nice for you. It's called Autumn Park and it's a sort of luxury hotel and I know you'll love it. I'm sure you will. You're saying... You want me to leave? Mum, I'm trying to do the best I can for all of us. Oh, well, I suppose it had to happen sometime. You're quite right. You've got your own life to lead. Mine's over. You're young. You don't want some silly old bat hanging around your neck just because she's your mother. Come on, Mum. No, no, Arthur, it's the truth. I am old. My memory is going. You can't look after me. Oh, what's that for? Just to say thank you. Oh, you don't have to thank me. You're a good boy, Arthur. But of course I can't go. Mum! No, 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 it's late. Look at the time. They'll be shut. Oh, no. <laughs> Not now, Mum. Tomorrow. We'll go tomorrow. All right? Did you see the flowers Robbie brought me? He's very busy, Robbie. But he still cares for his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Deidre. Arthur, listen, uh, I was uh, wondering if you'd like to come round tonight for a talk. What do you mean, what about? Do you want me to make out an agenda? I'll tell you when you get here. Mum, you won't need the golf clubs. <laughs> what? No, it's nothing to do with golf. Uh, I'll explain when I see you. Mum, listen, you're not taking the clubs. Why not? You won't need them. How do you know what I'll need? It's, it, you can't play golf. You don't know that. I don't know whether I can play golf or not, so how should you know? You've never played golf in your life. I could learn. They won't let you, Mum. There isn't enough room. Thought you said this was a luxury hotel. Amazing, isn't it? Most things go in one ear and out the other, but for some reason, a little mousetrap inside your head has snapped onto luxury hotel and it won't let go. Well, you said... Yes. It is like a luxury hotel in some ways, but they won't let you keep golf clubs. Well, I've never heard of a luxury hotel where they won't let you keep a few golf clubs. <laughs> Not this one. I'll keep them under my bed. They won't let you. How do you know? I asked them. Did you ask them specifically? Yes, I asked them specifically. <laughs> I said, can my mother keep a set of golf clubs under a bed? And they said, sorry, no. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. Don't worry about me either. I'll be all right. I say, I'll be quite all right. Yes, you'll be all right. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. This one's a better one. And he finally gets on target. Well, the Bombers have kicked seven goals to nothing in this quarter. Well then, Mrs. Bear, 
How are we settling in? Not very well, thank you. And I'd like to know why this isn't the sort of room you showed me yesterday. Isn't it? They all look the same to me. It's nothing right. This is a shared room. What's she doing here? Sharing, Mr. Bear. I might not have explained yesterday that the room you saw was our typical room. But unfortunately, our finances only allow us have one typical room at the moment. But rest assured that your dear mother is at the top of the list as soon as our next typical room becomes available. Come on now, Mrs. Bear, up on the bed. Uh, this is my son, Arthur. I know, we've met. I'm afraid I've forgotten your name. You can call me Matron. Oh, that's a little severe, surely. Now, would that be Miss Matron or Mrs. Matron? The Matron. Arthur, I'd like you to meet the Matron. And uh, this is my son, Arthur. I'm sure he'd like to meet you. Yes, yes, Mr. <laughs> Come on, dear, slip your shoes off. Arthur's wife has left him, so he's on the lookout now. Mum. He might even ask you out. I'll help you with your shoes. Arthur wants to get married again as quickly as possible and have lots and lots of children. Who <laughs> put these golf clubs under the bed? Golf clubs? <laughs> Mr. Bear, I thought I made it clear. Yes, you did. But they're her clubs. Oh, no, they're not my clubs. <laughs> they're your clubs. Never played golf in my life. There is no room here for golf clubs, and certainly not under the bed. Told you, Arthur. <laughs> Up on the bed, Mrs. Bear. And, Mr. Bear, I think it's time for you to go. And uh, take those clubs, would you? She seemed annoyed with you, Arthur. I don't think you hit it off with the matron. I've got to go now, Mum. Yes, off you go. Have a nice game. <laughs> I'll come and visit you as often as I can. Visit? Yes, Mum. This is where you live now. Here? I don't think I like this, Arthur. Still, I expect I've got to get used to it. Go, go, go! You silly fool! Yes, off you go, Arthur. Well, I've got to now. Deidre's coming round. Deidre? No, no, she's gone. I know, but she's coming round for a talk. Well, we'll see. I'll see you soon? Yes, yes, I'd like to see you sometime, if you can spare the time. And if I'm not too busy. Goodbye, Mum. Bye-bye. Have a nice what's-her-name. <laughs> Luxury hotel. Does this thing work? If you shout loud enough when you press the button. <laughs> ah, room service. Kindly call the hotel detective... Somebody has stolen my golf club. <laughs> well, Deirdre? Here's to you. You've finally decided to own your own life, and I'm very pleased for you. More champagne, my dear? No, thanks. I've got to go. I'm sorry, but I didn't know you were going to all this trouble. What trouble? A few flowers, some champagne, oysters, clean sheets. <laughs> I'm glad you've done something about your mother, but she wasn't the reason I left you. I left because, well, we're different people. I know. You're a woman, I'm a man. <laughs> Isn't that a good basis for a marriage? It's a question of growth. You've stopped growing. I haven't. Well, you've put on a bit of weight, maybe, but I don't mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, Arthur. I'm not coming back. So all this was a complete waste of time? No, it wasn't. You've taken the first step in your new life, now take the next. I go out with other men, so should you. I don't want to go out with other men. <laughs> there must be someone you can ring up. I don't know anyone. What about Caroline? Caroline? Lives next door, used to water the garden topless. I never knew that. No? <laughs> oh. Why did you spend almost every weekend last summer up on the roof? I was painting the chimney. With binoculars? <laughs> Go on, ring her up. No, not while you're here. Of course while I'm here, otherwise you won't do it. Go on. No. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> Deirdre, listen. 
If I want to go out with someone else, I'll organise it. I don't need my ex-wife to find women for me. Uh, hello, uh, Caroline. Uh, Arthur Bear. Uh, hi. Um, oh, you've heard about Deirdre. Hmm. Yes, uh, I'm all alone now. No, uh, I haven't seen much of you lately. Not as much as I used to. <laughs> uh, that'd be nice. Hmm. What? Now? You, you mean right now? She wants to come over now. Well, yeah, sure. Why not? I, I didn't have anything else planned. Maybe we could water the garden together. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> sure. See you in a minute. She's on her way. Oh, good. Why are you sitting down? I thought I'd say hello to her. Don't you have to go? Not now, when things are getting so interesting. On your way, woman. Oh, what a pity you're not always so assertive. Uh, not the front door. <laughs> Tradesmen and exes use the back door. A few minutes ago, I was an idea. Now I'm just ex. Good night, ex. You sure you don't want me to stay? As a consultant? No, oh, that'll be her. I'll get it. No, you won't. <laughs> Good luck. Luck? <laughs> Who needs luck? You've got looks like mine. <laughs> well, maybe a bit wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Mum! I waited for you, Arthur. I waited and waited. So I had to come home on my own. And that was the worst holiday I've ever had. 